explain that, which is about supporting scientists engaging with the public. So they only have three minutes to engage, enthuse, excite a public audience. Um, and they're normally very strict, so I hope you're going to be as strict today. I'm going to be strict. It runs in 23 countries around the world, and, and we'd like to run it in more. Thank you. Well, I'm a particle physicist, and I want to tell you a story. Now I will tell you the story. <laughs> so when I was a child, I was really a fan of sportive cars. Such a fun, like when I got my first salary as a PhD student, I bought an amazing convertible car. <laughs> One day I was driving my car in a highway, and suddenly a <laughs> question <laughs> came to my brain. How does a car work? How does a car work? I think I, I was not able to, to get this question out of my brain. So I decided to experiment. I take back the car, I drove up to the top of a hill. Then I stopped the car, I put my, my belt, breathe deeply and went downhill, accelerating, going faster and faster and faster. And when I got to highest speed, I just turned and collided. Boom! <laughs> this story sounds strange, even absurd, but this is how we operate in particle physics, in high energy physics. Whenever we want to understand how something works, how the universe operates, or what, what is the matter constituted of, we just collide particles. Because when we collide particles, something fascinating magical happens. This is because uh, the quantum physics, the world of the particles, is really, really certainly different of our experience, the classical world. Let me illustrate this point with an example. Imagine that we want to understand how a clock works. Something we could do with this clock, you see this clock? It's a beautiful clock. <laughs> Something we could do to understand this clock is... <laughs> then we can see and study the different pieces of the clock, like the crystal, the plastic, and all the different elements, like the internal machinery of the clock, in a deep, independent way. But now imagine that we want to go further and study something smaller, like an atom. We could do the same. Imagine I can go to the uh, quantum mechanical world and take a clock for the quantum mechanical world, and I want to study this clock. Okay? So this is, the, this is the best part of my day. So imagine I want to understand how this works and how this clock works, right? Something I could do is a game. And if I do it with enough energy, <laughs> with real high energy, I would see that besides the part of the clock, I get something different, like... Wait. This is a thing. <laughs> or a sock. <laughs> a dirty sock. Or let me check. Ah, sun cream. Welcome to London de Janeiro. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting ironic. <laughs> or even if I'm lucky sometimes. Oh, this is an award. So winner of quantum communication. <laughs> That's great. This is my time then. So let me thank the excellent Mr. President of the quantum world, the Minister of Quantum Entanglement and Quantum Computing, Secretary of Academy of Feynman Diagrams, Director General of Quantum Bullshit Applications, <laughs> including quantum Reiki, quantum acupuncture, quantum telepathy, and other major quantum bullshit. <laughs> and other protocol members, thank you very much for the prize. This is, this is why we call it particles. Because out of the collision of two particles, they arise different particles that are not part of the initial ones. Then, by colliding protons, for example, we can get pions, counts, hyperons, or even if we're lucky, things like the Higgs boson. At CERN in Geneva, in the LHC, it's a 27 kilometers long accelerator, 100 meters underground, that accelerates protons at that energy never achieved before. That corresponds to 99.999999% of the speed of light. And we collide them 40 million times per second to reproduce the beginning of the universe, how it was when it was only 10 to the minus 21 second of age. That is back to 13,800 million years ago. That's roughly the natural days in Brazilian bureaucracy time <laughs> units. So, 
one day I, went, I was going back to work here in the State University of Rio de Janeiro. Of course, um, public transportation because my car, you can imagine what happened with it. And I found a friend, Argentinian friend called Martin. I was talking to him and explaining this story about the car. He was looking to me awkwardly, like, what the hell are you telling? And suddenly he interrupted me. Hey, Javier, are you stupid or what? Why don't you didn't open the car? Thank you very much. <laughs>